coming off a tough loss to the Clippers on Saturday. Remember, he missed those foul shots. He's back at it last night, taking on the Sixers, already without Ben Simmons, who's going to have to have surgery on his knee. And now watch what happens here. Keep an eye on Joel Embiid. Following the play, watch him stepping into the stanchion. And we're going to give you a closer look. Watch the ankle closely. Oh, he would go to the locker room and leave. He would not return. Six minutes, two points, and now a big question mark for Joel Embiid. Take you meanwhile to the end of this game. Under three to go. Blazers are down one. Watch Damian Lillard. Watch. Gets the contact. Yes, plus the foul. That's a four-point play as he knocks down the free throw. And then there's more. Finding just a sliver of space is Dame for another three. He was 16 of 28 from the floor. Knocked down four threes. Sixers, last chance. Ten seconds left. Inbounding, down by three. Josh Richardson is down. Josh Richardson is up. He's going to get up a shot here. Down three. Tick, 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 tick. This is for the tie. No good. Offensive rebound. No, they can't secure it. Portland hangs on and wins 124-121. Damian Lillard scores 51, atoning for the missed free throws of the other night. But in the big picture, that is probably not the big story from this game. You see Joel Embiid getting hurt after Simmons has to leave the bubble and will undergo surgery. Big mm -hmm. Perk is with us, and Jackie Mack is here this morning as well. And Jackie, as we look at this, and, and, and you see the continued injury concerns with Embiid, and now Simmons being injured, I, the first thought that went through my mind was, is it time to give up on the process? Is it time to pull the plug on this thing we've been calling the process in Philly for a very long time? Well, Greeny, if it were up to me, I would not be pulling that plug. I think you're talking about two young players who I would argue have yet to reach their prime, who I think are both going to end up being Hall of Famers. That was a fluke injury for Joel. He's actually stayed relatively healthy this year. I understand why people are frustrated in Philadelphia, but these two players proved they could play together last year. The lack of perimeter shooting this year, Greeny, surrounding them has only exacerbated the problems that they run into when teams start jamming them into a half court. I would not break up Embiid and Simmons. Not on my watch. Okay, fair enough. I like that. How about you, Big Perk? Yes or no? Would you break up Embiid and Simmons if it was your decision in Philly? No, I wouldn't. I'm not breaking up Joel B and Ben Simmons. Both of these guys are generational talents, and both of these guys are young studs. And like Jackie said, they haven't even reached their prime. Now, I'm going to tell you why, why I will have a – what if I'm the 76 is I would divorce Brett Brown. It's time to get a new young blood up in there. Ty Lue is the guy for the job. It's time for a new coaching change. That's the only change that I would make additional to role players on the roster, but – if I'm if I'm Elton Brand in the front office of the Philadelphia 76ers, I'm keeping these two young studs together, and I'm going to find a way to make it work. I would just very quickly, Ali, if I could follow up on that. Jackie, just a quick follow-up on that, if I could. The, the two of them, I watched them play, and yes, they're both brilliant players. I think Embiid, when he's right, is the best big man in the entire sport, and that, that excluding no one. But... Sometimes they look to me like a square peg in a round hole or whatever two things don't fit together well like that, uh, particularly in postseason time. <laughs> is, is that, Jackie, is that not a concern for you, that the, the two of them, to me at least, do not appear to, be the, the, to mix in the way that we have sometimes seen the great duos? Well, Greeny, the reason you see that is because Ben Simmons, I don't know what position to call him. He's a positionist player, which is where the NBA is going. But when he was at the point guard spot, what teams do is they sag off him because they're going to dare him to shoot that three, which we all know he's been, been reluctant to do. When people were criticizing Joel Embiid early in the season for shooting those threes, the reason he was doing it was to open up the inside for his teammate Ben Simmons. It can work, but I stress again, when you lose J.J. Redick, when Jimmy Butler hits the road, your spacing suffers. And I think that's got as much to do with why they look the way you're describing as anything. I believe fervently that these guys can coexist together. I really do. I think with the proper spacing, it'll work. Okay, so it's not time. Our crew says it's not time to abandon the process. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.